Amazon is a stock that is very misunderstood. A lot of people look at the retail section and see that it is not profitable and assume that is why the company is just gonna go down, but they're wrong. Their retail section doesn't need to be profitable and they also don't aim for it to be profitable. The future on Amazon lies in its third party, its ads and Prime. Of course, there's the cash cow AWS, but that is mostly just to improve the other services because then they have higher margins, but it is also nice that it brings in a lot of cash. But first of all, yes, Amazon can still grow. 61% of its revenue comes from North America right now and only 22% from international so they still have a lot of room to grow even if not in North America, international, Europe, Asia, Africa. Now if we look where the revenue is coming from, we see that of course online stores which is Amazon selling you stuff directly is still the biggest and it is slowing down but that is kind of good because this is not where the margins come from. So if revenue slows down here while it reaccelerates in other parts that is very good. The second biggest thing after an online stores is third party seller services, which is basically third party selling on Amazon or even taking stuff like Amazon FBA, which is basically they send for stuff to Amazon, Amazon packages and sends it out. Now this is good for many reasons because there are very high margins here. Amazon charging a fee to list something basically doesn't cost them anything and this segment still grows at 18% year over year. And I'm going to continuously show you how basically the online stores are there to accelerate the other divisions. In this case, Amazon needs to sell its own stuff so that people shop on there and then third party sellers come to sell more. And the more third parties take over, the less Amazon needs to sell itself. At least when it comes to the lower margin stuff, they can focus more on high quality stuff. Next is subscription services, which is stuff like Prime. Once again, this is also why the online stores don't need to be profitable. They're just there to attract you and then buy an Amazon Prime membership where they make the money. It's basically, in this case, just the same as Costco. Costco does make the money from selling you the product it makes the money by selling you a membership. And a lot of people, oh, Prime is so big, it can't grow any further. Still 14% revenue growth year over year. This is also a very high margin segment. Next up is AWS, which of course is the cash cow right now of Amazon. It allows them to have higher margins on all other stuff because they have it in-house. And it also gives them a lot of cash. Sure, it is slowing down just because it is way too big, but it is still a big competitor. It is still gonna make a lot of money for some time. Next up is the advertising services, which is one of the best parts of Amazon, including with the subscription services, because it is also basically 100% margin. People pay for ads on Amazon and it costs Amazon nothing. Growing at 22% year over year, already making 10 billion in revenue per quarter. And this is once again an example why the online stores don't need to be profitable. Because they have those online stores, they're able to put out ads which are high margin. People are willing to spend a lot of money on these ads because unlike with TikTok, Google or Meta ads, there's a direct buy intent. If you put an ad for, let's say, your shoes on Meta, Someone is scrolling through Instagram and sees your ad. Maybe he likes shoes, but he doesn't want to buy shoes right now. And even if he clicks on it, he would leave the app, have to go on Amazon, on your website, go through the checkout, enter the payment info. Here on Amazon, you just put out an ad. People who are willing to buy shoes because they're looking for that, see your offer, they put it in their basket. Everything is already entered into Amazon. So there's very little restraint when it comes to purchasing, entering your credit card information and be like, oh, do I really need this? So ads that are put on Amazon have very high return on investment. So people are willing to pay a lot for those. This is why this part of Amazon is gonna be one of the future growth drivers. Of course, Amazon also has physical stores. They're just one of those things that entice you to sign up for Prime. Stuff like Whole Foods, they have a bunch of discounts for Prime members. This is just one of the other ways to get you into the Amazon ecosystem. They don't care that the physical stores of online stores are break even if they only lose a bit of money. As long as subscription services sign up is high, as long as people are willing to spend on ads, as long as other parties are willing to sell on Amazon and spend a lot of money on those listings, then Amazon's completely fine. Amazon is finally also reducing some headcount. They're not firing people, they're not calling it layoffs. But because Amazon has such a high churn of people, they just don't rehire them. But it's also good because they don't need to pay severance. And of course, Amazon is currently coming out of investment phase. They have spent so much money on new logistics, etc. We don't know if they overspend. We will only see that in a few years. I believe they overspend by a lot. At least free cash flow is back now because they have taken on a lot of debt. They're now working on slightly reducing that. They're now paying 3 billion per year in interest expense. Of course, it's not a lot yet compared to their size, but I think it was just unnecessary to do. There's one thing on Amazon that really, really concerns me. The stock-based compensation. It has just gone up way too much. It's currently sitting at $23 billion per year. Just to give you an idea of how much stock-based compensation that is. If Amazon's free cash flow would recover to the levels of early 2020, 
they would make no free cash flow if you deduct stock-based compensation. If they don't get this under control and shrink it, I don't think Amazon is gonna be a good investment. Now when it comes to valuing Amazon, let's see what we expect the free cash flow to be. I would say capital expenditures will stabilize at around 20 billion per year. Minus 60 billion in operating cash flow makes 40 billion in free cash flow. Let's say they stabilize stock-based compensation at 15 billion a year. That means 25 billion in free cash flow. With that, we come to a free cash flow share of 2.5. Because the parts which are growing the revenue right now are the high margin businesses, so we can assume a higher growth rate in free cash flow than we have with revenue, 15% for the next 5 years, 12% for the next 5 years after that, 10% required return and a 20 multiple. That would bring us to an intrinsic value of $61. The current value is 131, so we would have a 53% downside. Currently on Amazon, on these estimates, we would get around a 2% return. What if we assume a better scenario? The capital expenditures go even lower, stock-based compensation also gets more reduced, and operating cash flow goes up a bit. Plus, they're having a higher growth rate, growth rate accelerates to 20% and 15% after that, and we get a higher multiple of 24. Then we would get a return. Then the stock would be worth $201. But to be honest, this is very extreme. That would be if everything goes perfect, the world is great, which I don't think it's gonna happen like this. They just spend way too much, their stock-based compensation is way too high to get it down. So I think this is the more realistic case. And what if it goes even worse? They're not reducing stock-based compensation that much. Their capital expenditures stay higher for longer. Growth stays lower. Well, then we would only have a value of $25 per share. In my opinion right now, the risk reward at Amazon is just not right. It is a fantastic business for having a lot of spending problems, so I'm not a buyer of Amazon. What do you think? Write it down below. Have a good day.